What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to be exploring the region of Noxus. So in previous videos, I have covered Demacia and also the Shadow Isles. And what I do is I cover each region on this map explore before I go through the individual champions for that very region. So today we are going to be exploring Noxus. So um, no surprise here, Noxus covers the largest portion of the map bloody noxons uh, yeah yeah they do so what's interesting as well is they've chosen the color red for noxus as well mm. right okay anyways let's go so noxus brutal expansionist empire <laughs> that is that's the governance okay so the governance is expansionist empire but they've got brutal in there as well. Hmm. Okay. Level of technology is medium. Attitude towards magic is weaponized. So complete opposite to Demacia. And general environment is inhospitable steppers. Okay. So Noxus is a brutal expansionist empire. Yet those who look beyond its warlike exterior will find an unusually inclusive society. Anyone can rise to a position of power and respect, which is what we saw from, um, I forgot the title of the video, but I think it was the second or third one in the Legends of Rune Terror series. Um, after, after victory, that's it, after victory. Anyone can rise to a position of power and respect if they display the necessary ap aptitude, regardless of social standing. I was going to say, regardless of social distancing, hmm. regardless of social standing, background or wealth. Noxons value strength above all, obviously, though that strength can manifest in different ways. Kind of like in the way that Swain has it. It's not just all that power. He is a, a tactician as well as a strategist. Um, and he's smart as well. So maybe that's what it's kind of alluding to. And he's a savage. So um, we have all the champions here, plus another three, and we have featured in Noxus as well. So what I'll do is I'm gonna jump into the champions uh, first. Um, yeah, let's go into the champions first and have a look. So, um, here. So Noxus. Right, okay, let's go through this. Noxus is a powerful empire with a fearsome reputation. To those beyond its borders, it is brutal, expansionist, and threatening, as Demacia. Yet those who look past this warlike exterior see an unusual inclusive society where the strengths of talents of its people are respected and cultivated. Really? Okay. The Noxi were once fierce barbarian tribes until they stormed the ancient city that now lies at the heart of their domain. Under threat from all sides, they aggressively took the fight to the enemies, pushing their borders outward with each passing year. This struggle for survival has made, the, made modern Noxons a deeply proud people who value strength above all, though their strength can manifest in different forms. Anyone can rise to a position of power and respect within Noxus if they display that necessary aptitude, regardless of social standing, background, homeland or wealth. And that's what makes them so unique in comparison to Demacia, because in Demacia that is not possible. This is the key thing here, regarding of, regardless of social standing or background. Hmm. Those who are able to wield magic are held in particularly high esteem, exactly opposite to Noxus, uh, to uh, Demacia, and are actually sought out in order that their special talents may be honed and best harnessed for the best benefit of the Empire. I'm sure Silas would be loved if he was there, but in spite of this metriotic idea, uh, whatever that is, ideal, the old noble houses still wield considerable power, and some fear that the greatest threat to Noxus comes not from its enemies, but from within. Interesting. So these are the champions. So we have Cassiopeia, we have Darius, we have Draven, Katarina, Kled. Let's see who else we have here. We have LeBlanc, we have Riven, we have Samira, Sion, Swain, Vladimir and Talon. Talon was one of the first players I actually played when I started playing League of Legends. Um, yeah, cool player. So, interesting to find out all the champions from uh, Noxus. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back. Let's see if I can go back here. And have a quick look around the map. So, um, what I'm going to do is start off here. 
the immortal bastion So, once the strong cult of the Dread Revenant Mordekaiser, which we obviously found out about, about a little bit about last week in part two of Mordekaiser, now a forbidden vault of mysteries, in its shadow the capital city of Noxus has grown over many centuries of imperial expansion. Right, okay, what is this here? This is the Noxian expansion. Ooh, okay. Whether a city is taken by force or willingly swears fealty to Noxus, its war masons immediately set to work in stamping the Empire's authority upon the newly acquired territory. Nice. Gateways of dark stone quarried from the mountains surrounding the capital are raised on every road leading to the city, which is probably what you can see here. Uh, known throughout Val um, Valoran as no uh, Noctora, gateway of Noxus in in Urnox. These towering structures leave approaching travellers in no doubt as to who holds the reins of power. So yeah, you've got a nice looking city here and then this is kind of the, mm, the gateway. Okay, so war masons. War masons are resourceful scouts, engineers and warriors who design and oversee the construction of roads, bridges and fortifications. Often the first indication of Nox and expansion is not the sight of troops on the march, but a lone war mason scouting enemy territory for possible invasion routes. Right, okay. So this is an example of a male and female war mason. Cool. Okay, okay. So, let's see how far. Can I zoom out? Yeah, I can. Okay. Let's see how far the expansion goes. So it goes up to here. Does it? It does. Right, the Delver Hold, mountain fortress which rich mines supply Noxus with gold and iron. So this is maybe where Darius came from. Okay, so kind of on the borders, isn't it? On the borders to the Freyod. Let's just have a look at that. Yep. Okay. So what do we have down down here? Okay, Piltovazan. We have. Ah, so this is got Darius and his brother Draven there as well. Port City, whose rebellion against Empire was, was quashed by its very... Oh! So this is where Darius is from. Um, Basilich. Port City, whose rebellion against the Empire was quashed by its very own son, Darius. Oh! And then, this here. What do we have here? Right, the armies of Noxus. The armies of Noxus appear to be little more than barbarous hosts of individual warbands, but this belies the discipline and sophistication required to make such a formation viable. The success of Noxian armies is undeniable, and their very diversity is testament to its effectiveness. Conquer peoples that swear loyalty to Noxus become part of his armies and add their unique strengths to the Empire's war efforts. Thus regimentation and uniformity are Anathemia yeah, to the Noxian way of life, and each warband is celebrated for the many and varied methods of war it brings to bear. Once again, we see that example in um, After Victory. Okay, so this one here, the warbands. Noxus has one of the largest armies in the known world, composed of elite troops such as the Tifarian Legion, as well as hundreds of individual localised warbands, led by their own chieftains, marshals and captains, each warband is unique with its own culture, uh, hierarchy and favoured way of war. They fulfil specific roles as part of a much larger war host, perhaps fighting as frontline shot troops, heavy infantry, scouts, assassins or cavalry, whatever best suits their skills. And this is five examples of that as well. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. What I like about that as well is is how Mordekaiser kind of takes up elements of a lot of these, doesn't he? He's got the armor here of this one at the front and kind of like the mask of the one at the back. He has the large mace of this guy here as well. But yeah, it's cool to see the uniqueness of all the warbands and how they work together. And then we have this here, whatever that is. Zamorai Redblades. 
The, Zamar the Zamari tribes are renowned for their skill with long blades of blood quenched steel. Not water, not oil, blood quenched. Okay. Okay. Zamari swordmasters take vows of silence, becoming the bane of enemy commanders as they evade bodyguards and life wards with eads. Take vows of silence. That reminds me of something. There's a similar um, type of people in Warhammer as well. And they happen to be female as well. Female guards of the Emperor. I forgot what they're called. But they take a vow of silence as well. I'm sure it's I'm sure they do. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so that is that. So what I'm do, gonna do now is I'm going to let's go back to this here. So let's have a look at this in more detail. So we've gone through the champions, explore related stories. I'm gonna leave the stories because they're probably wow. Look at the artwork on these stories. So this one's Vladimir. I'm not too sure who this one is. The Dreaming Pool. Hmm. Not too sure on that one as well. Maybe it's Viego's wife. <laughs> Maybe not. And this one is LeBlanc. Yeah, the artwork's on point as well. So there we go. Tales of Runeterra Noxus. This is after victory. We have environments. Okay, let's explore some of these environments. So this one here. Layers of history. The immortal bastion at the heart of Noxus is far more ancient than the Empire itself. It is said that it was constructed on the order of the dreaded Revan Mordecai, and parts of it have been raised and rebuilt over the centuries, such that there are layers in the streets and some districts now lie beyond, below ground. Few dare walk these streets after dark without guard to protect them. And this is an example of that as well. Mm. Parts of it kind of look like the Shadow Isles in terms of how it, um, the structure. Mm. Some poor guy or something trapped in there. Okay. So, Noxian presence in Shurima. A number of ports and cities in northern Shurima were voluntarily assimilated into the empire, just like the Bog. The original inhabitants of these settlements live in relative peace, lucky them, with their Noxian counterparts, seeing the exchange of food and preferential trade as, as a price worth paying for military protection from raiders. Interesting. Okay, and we have this example here. Cool picture. Next one, life is a battle. Huh, is that Sion? That's maybe Sion there against some poor soul. Noxus respects strength above all, and the only way to remain strong is to be constantly tested. They relish the opportunity to compete with one another since it since to not be challenged is to grow weak. And even those at the peak of power must always stay and seek new ways to challenge themselves, or they will not remain in power for long. It is not just physical or martial strength that knocks into Maya. Those who demonstrate expertise in politics, craftsmanship, trade and magic all help to create a stronger Noxus. That's interesting as well because when it says life is a battle you just think of obviously them just fighting one another. I like what it says there, those who demonstrate expertise in the below as well all help create a stronger Noxus. Interesting. And this reminds me of when I went through in Demacia um, Zinchao. Um, he's, his origins are kind of interesting, actually. His origins are from Ionia, but then also from Noxus as well. He has a skin dedicated to this. I think it's a gladiatorial skin where he's fighting in a gladiatorial arena. I'm sure somewhere, something similar to this as well. So I like the link between that champion and this region as well. But yeah, this, this is probably <laughs> Sion or someone like him. And maybe these are the next people to go up as well. Okay, interesting there as well. The guards, the... What the guards are wearing kind of similar to not um to Damasia. in a way the what they're wearing the arm was kind of similar hmm anyways okay next one a state of perpetual conflict what a great picture what a great picture that is yeah it's nice Okay, the state of pute pute uh, perpetual conflict. Noxus is an aggressive and expansionist empire, always looking to widen its borders by conquering new lands. It does not always do so by violence. Indeed, many are the nations that have taken the knee before the Grand General, seeing a chance for greater stability and secure security in joining the empire. Those who defy Noxus, however, are crushed without mercy. Grand General, maybe that's Swain. Okay. Oppressive and defensible. So we've got some images here. Noxian cities are characterized by imposing structures, claustrophobic streets, uh, crenelled, 
buildings, steep sloped walls and immense gateways. Their cities emphasise the strength and dominance of the empire and highly defensible. An enemy attempted to take a Noxian city by force can expect to be fought and resisted at, at, at every turn. For even the humble home is built like a fortress. Hmm. Similar to Cadia. Yeah, okay, cool. So, this one here has just a bullet point. Interesting. No details. But that's a cool picture as well. And then, the final one... It's the same, just a nice image. Um, is that the same? This this picture here looks at the side view of this building here, yeah. But this is another really good picture. I like how it shows that as well, the wide view of the empire. So, okay, that is the environment. Let's see what else. Yeah, we have life in Noxus. So let's have a look at this. Cultural inclusive as noxus expands and defeats neighboring cultures and cities it offers the conquered people a choice swear loyalty to noxus and be judged solely on your worth or be destroyed this is not sub subterfuge or any kind of ruse the noxians are as good as good as their word and many who have embraced their conquered ways of life find their prospects greatly improved but those who refuse to bend the knee are crushed without mercy so these are examples of that and then we have here old blood new blood anyone can prosper in noxus no matter their back background so long as they have the strength of will and the, the drive to succeed the warlord darius is a perfect example of this rising from nothing to become one of the empire's most powerful leaders despite this meritocratic ideal the old noble family still wield considerable power at the heart of the empire and some fear that the greatest threat to noxus comes not from its enemies but from within so interesting dynamics going on there as well that makes me think i wonder where i wonder where set's from set would fit in quite nicely with noxus wouldn't it hmm Drake hounds. Whoa. Drake hounds are a spe species of wingless wolf sized carnivores that, that layer in the mountains to the north of the Noxian capital. They are vicious pack hunters and much favoured in Noxus as war beasts, guard creatures, and expensive, a bit, da a bit dangerous pets. To own one or more Drake hounds is a visible symbol of wealth and power. Okay. Here we have a nice shot of Swain. Noxus and magic. Noxans generally regard magic as another powerful tool to the arsenal. Those who are able to wield it are held in high esteem and are actively sought out. Even beyond the borders of Noxus, in order that their special talents may be honed and best harnessed for the benefit of the Empire. Okay. Right, and this is obviously one of the images we saw before as well. So interesting, interesting to go through some images and examples of life in Noxus. So, let's see if we have anything else we do. Military. So, let's look at the military. This is what we saw before. We went through this one. Strength in variety. This seems to be kind of a theme here as well, doesn't it? I'm sure this, this guy was in uh, After Victory as well, or someone similar to him was in After Victory next to Darius as well. The beast, the giant guy that booted down the door. Um... Even within the Trifarian region, there is little uniformity within the ranks. In Noxus, a warrior's natural talents and specialities are embraced, rather than force them to conform to a certain way of waging war. This carries across into all aspects of Noxian life. They believe in discovering what you are good at and find a way to utilise that to make the Empire stronger. This is the thing about Noxus, and also you could say about Damascia as well. There's good points and there's bad points. There's aspects of Damascus that are good, but they're quite rigid in their belief system, which is a weakness. And clearly Noxus, are, they'll take over everyone and um, are violent and aggressive. But there's aspects of Noxian life and their ideas of living, which are um, good as well. And I like that. It's not a case of good versus evil. If you look into each region, they all seem to have a bit of good and evil in that region as well. Um, and, and in a way as well, Noxus know it. Noxus are proud of that. While I think the Masia are kind of arrogant or oblivious to the fact that they are there's elements of evil in their society as well. Anyway, 
the Trifarian region. Legion. Okay. The most elite respected and battle hardened military force within the Noxian Empire, the Legion, is led by Darius himself. They are not only the best soldiers in Noxus, but also the most loyal, utterly devoted to the Empire and its leaders. Their armor is heavy and utilitarian, and other features and often features three indentations hammered into their breastplates representing their tri trifarix. The three principles of strength and the name given to the Grand General Swain's ruling council. Ah, so there we go. Didn't know that. So, Noxian weaponry. Example of some Noxian weaponry there. Hmm, plus it is Chalice. The forges of Noxus never... The forgers of Noxus never cool, churning out swords, axes, and armor in vast quantities for distribution to the war hosts. The Empire values function over form. Their designs often incorporate additional uses, such as hooks, handles to un unhorse mounted enemies. Which is, yeah, we saw that part there. We saw this here, here, even in the sword handles as well. Hmm. In recent years, Noxus has become an experiment with crude black powder weapons and chemtech from Zahn though the results are mixed often as destructive to friend as they are to enemy okay Noxian armor Noxian forged weapons tools and implements tend to share the same severe aesthetic as can be seen in the Empire's um, architecture and dress okay Axe of Darius I like how it's got its own page you know the Axe of Darius Okay, uh, no explanation needed there, just a bullet point. Okay, War Masons, which we talked about before. And then we have Balisks, is it? Balisks, yeah. So, monstrous reptiles from the southern jungles. Okay, Balisks are fierce predators that can grow to gargantuan sizes. Young Balisks are prized riding beasts and few can stand there can stand against their charge. After they become too large for a rider to control, they are put to use as beasts of burden, or sometimes as living battering rams to smash down the walls of besieged cities. Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay, so that is the military. Do we have anything else? So we have Darius here, Blood of Noxus. I'm not going to get into this because this I'm sure is going to tie in nicely with his champion law. Um, we have a featured video, Surviving in Noxus, Dev Diary. And we have other regions. So, um, I think I'm going to leave this as well. I might cover this in a later video. Uh, but yeah, I think I'll leave it here today, guys, on this one. Um, hopefully you enjoyed my um, ex map explore of the region of Noxus. Uh, what I'm going to, going to be doing next is I'm going to be covering a champion from Noxus next week, like I do for, um, like I've done for the Shadow Isles and also G Masia as well. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next one.